Hi, I'm Scott Gray, a 25-year-old writer-director. My screenplay approaching the event horizon is a feature taken from experiences that happened to me in my early 20s, similar to It's a Wonderful Life and a Ghost Story. The film tackles themes of life, death, and rebirth. When a young man overdoses on the night of his 24th birthday, he finds himself confronting his troubled past and the people who defined it. The story opens with our protagonist Sam in the midst of his overdose. While Sam's friends rush him into an ambulance, his spirit is elsewhere, in the dark of the event horizon, where he is confronted by a monster. The monster plays back scenes from Sam's past, where we learn about Sam's abusive upbringing and the trauma that would go on to affect the rest of his life. At the end of Act 1, Sam recovers in a Greek hospital, and will spend the second act of the film reconciling with his friends for what happened the night before. Meanwhile, we are also shown flashbacks to Sam's teenage years, how Sam forged the friendships he made with the people who would go on to save his life, whilst also realising how his abusive childhood affected the relationship he had with his first love, causing his internalised self-hatred to grow, and create further cause for his overdose and griefs. In this act, Sam is also reminded of the people who are grateful for him, the nephews who idolise him and the loving friends he made at college and university. Twenty years later, Sam is now a father in Los Angeles. Here, Sam is able to use his past experiences to help guide his daughter through a troubling situation, similar to his as a teenager. We then skip forward to Sam as an elderly man on the day of his death, surrounded by the loving people he's met through this journey. Sam dies an idealistic death surrounded by his loved ones. However, this is not reality. This has all been a hallucination within the event horizon to help Sam's mind come to peace with his own death. The monster showing Sam what life could have been like had he not overdosed at the beach party. Here, a reborn Sam will take the decision not to die and to fight for his life, not to lose the people he loves and give reason for his trauma by going back and helping others similar to him. Sam opens his eyes to the sight of his friends resuscitating him, and we cut to black. This is my second feature. My first was selected for the Titan Awards 2021, and whilst this screenplay has been selected for London Liftoff and Big Break 2022, it's still the first written draft, meaning there is more room for this screenplay to blossom. At this stage, I'm seeking representation as a writer-director, as well as funding for a short version of the script to be used as a proof of concept. It's important to be that this story is told in order to help those quietly suffering from drug addiction and depression. It teaches self-love, and the hope of this, and all the scripts I've written, is to help create a more loving and compassionate world. Hi, my name's Nicola Green and I've written a feature biopic screenplay entitled The Split. Squire Waterman, who has won many motorcycling events. The Split tells a story of three lives unknowingly intertwined over a span of 50 years. Squire Split Waterman, a sporting hero turned gold thief, sick child Jenny and a grieving daughter Emma. Determined to uncover her family's hidden past, Emma discovers a dark secret and a long hidden legacy that binds the three lives together. Split Waterman was a household name in 1960s London, a champion and hero of the British motorcycle speedway circuit at the height of its popularity. But his fame and ensuing lifestyle led him into a life of crime and a perilous path of descent he was drawn into London's gangland underworld and became a party to a number of brazen and highly publicised bullion robberies. The story of the split unfolds as Emma discovers a series of clues to her uncle's and her mother's past. Old photographs, newspaper cuttings, the neighbours' anecdotes and most mysteriously, a series of receipts hidden in the house. As Emma sorts her mother's long-forgotten keepsakes, her curiosity grows with each clue she finds. Finally, a chance to uncover the hidden secrets of her family's past. Britain has a long lineage of outlaw folk heroes. The story of one of them has been hidden until now. The Split is such a unique story with such wide appeal. It would suit big budget, cinematic experience or a much smaller budget three-part miniseries for the streaming services think mrs wilson i'm looking for a producer to bring my project to life thank you very much for your time hello i'm seamus sullivan and i'd like to pitch you my script if the gods are good based on the book if the Gods Are Good, The Epic Sacrifice of HMS Jarvis Bay by Gerald Duskin and Ralph Sigman. When I read the book, I immediately wanted to adapt it. I contacted Ralph and we agreed to collaborate on a screenplay. Logline. During World War II, the Jarvis Bay, an old cargo ship with a civilian crew, is the only defense for a vital British convoy. When a vastly superior German warship attacks, the captain and the crew of the Jarvis Bay know they must sacrifice themselves so the convoy can escape. There are over 1,300 films about World War II, so what will set our script apart? It is the simple David vs. Goliath nature of the story that makes it stand out. 
The Jarvis Bay is a cargo ship with World War I-era guns bolted to its deck, while the German ship, the Admiral Scheer, is among the most modern. The majority of the story will be seen through the eyes of Jack Barker, a 17-year-old volunteer with no naval experience. He's willing but unsure, eventually seasoned with the help from older crewmen and officers. The title refers to the captain, Edward Feegan, who declares upon taking command, if the gods are good and we meet the enemy, I shall take you in as close as I can, instantly inspiring the crew with a Horatio Nelson-like confidence. True to his world, word, Feegan orders the Jarvis Bay to sail directly for the Germans when they attack. This diagram shows the course of the battle as the Jarvis Bay steams toward the battleship, smokescreen deployed, and the convoy scattering into the night. The Jarvis Bay occupies the Germans for nearly two hours before finally sinking. After the battle, Barker and 64 survivors struggle as they float in the middle of the cold, turbulent North Atlantic. They survive by clinging to each other and singing songs like they'll always be in England and roll the barrel. Several hours later, they are rescued by a Swedish freighter, one of the ships the Jarvis Bay had saved. Thank you for hearing my pitch. Please contact me if you're interested. Hi, my name is Josh Winters. I'm the writer of With Dreams, With Drugs, With Waking Nightmares. Uh, the story revolves around three college students in desperate need of therapy who are supposed to move out for winter break, but there's no den. I made my thesis film, Water Parks on Fire, a couple years ago, and it was much larger in scale. It had a lot of moving parts. It didn't really go anywhere, so I tried to tone this one down and kind of keep it more contained. This movie takes place over one night, and I really wanted it to feel like one of those nights where you're up till 2 a.m. with friends just talking shit, discussing politics, or contemplating the universe. With films where you have these confined limitations, you actually have this new uh, territory to explore. I wanted to reference films like Stephen Knight's Lock or dialogue heavy films like Noah Baumbach's Catalog, especially Francis Ha. I have the entire movie scripted, budgeted, shot listed, and then one part cast. I can make the movie comfortably for 16500 I know this festival is based overseas, so that's either 15,493 euros or 13,325 pounds. I haven't really tried to advertise the movie anymore in regards to casting, as, at least as of right now, because I want to make sure I can pay people to show up. I had a couple chance meetings with some financiers and those kind of just fell apart. Ultimately, I think this is a film I think a lot of people can relate to. I wanted to illustrate those fears and those anxieties that people may feel like they haven't seen on screen before. Not, not just with college, but a lot of life is uncertain. We're gonna panic. We're gonna feel like we're losing control. That's the human experience, and I just wanna put that on the screen. Thanks. Hi, my name is Natalie Houchins, and I'm the screenwriter for Leda. I am based in Austin, Texas. Leda tells the story of a young woman who is navigating a new relationship as her sexual traumas and fantasies come to life in terrifying ways. I wrote Leda during isolation when my inner world started to leak into my outer world and I was asking myself the question, what if everyone could see what was going on inside my head? I intend on directing Leda, and so I'm interested in finding a producing partner who believes in this project as much as I do and is willing to go on the fundraising and casting journey with me um, and finding a crew with an eye towards filming this project in late 2023 or early 2024. Ideally, this would take place in Austin, where I am based, but I am open to any location around the world. My vision is a lo-fi, gritty, honest film that doesn't need to employ a lot of special effects, although the script is a fantasy. I think that it can be just as effective with um, a more indie feel. We've all had a lot of time to ourselves the last few years, and so why not tell a story that dives straight into the most personal part of someone's mind um, and also explore sexuality in a new way, which I think we're on the precipice 
In fact, I think we're in the process of a second sexual revolution. And so I think this story is very much situated in that and is super relevant. Hello, I'm aspiring writer-director Luke Lewis and I'm here today to talk to you about a short film that's very close to my heart called Four Walls. The film's inspired by the small acts of kindness that kept us going through the pandemic. Four Walls is a short heartwarming drama set during the lockdown of 2020. It follows an unlikely relationship that forms between an elderly man, Albert, and a young man, Max. Feeling the full force of isolation, these two men will find salvation in each other. I've been working on a script for a couple of years and I believe it is now ready. I would love to see this film made and distributed. To do this, I've been looking for help from any producers, distributors, or agents, or anyone interested in seeing this film reach fruition. I am open to hearing from anyone who could help me find funding or even contribute themselves. I'm in a position where I could direct, but if the right person was looking for a project like this, I'd be happy to see someone else direct. I'm also looking for people with experience in cinematography or production design to help give the film a visual flair. I believe this film is set apart from other short films by its simplicity. It has no dialogue, few locations, and a focus on telling an emotive story from a specific vantage point. I think it is very important this film is made now, as memories of the pandemic thankfully fade. We need to remember the lessons of that time. I feel that this story is still prevalent both as a living document showing what it was like to live at this specific moment in history, and also as a warning highlighting the dangers of old age loneliness which was a problem before the pandemic, and is still a problem now. This film shows us the kindness we are truly capable of, while entertaining and warming the heart of any audience. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me, and I'm looking forward to hearing from anyone who can help me get this project off the ground.